Hey YouTube, Martin here from JPS Health and Fitness and today's video is all about how hard you should be training. Now you may have heard this topic being discussed recently over YouTube and there have been several videos uploaded uh, initially by Jeff Nippon and then a response by Greg Desette and today we're going to recap uh, some of the uh, content that was discussed and the goal of this video is to help you make sense of the topic you know, how hard should you be training there are many key considerations uh, that are practical and logical which we need to take into account when discussing this topic and hopefully today I can elucidate some of these considerations for you now there does seem to be two camps here so one camp which utilizes science uh, heavily to inform uh, decision making throughout a training program and then we have the other camp which is run by Greg and he says that really you just need to be training harder than freaking last time so the arguments against that camp is that maybe it's too much of a simple approach maybe it's just reductionist on the other hand the science may be too comprehensive and complex for some people to understand. So do we really need to be digging that deep? Okay, this is what we're going to explore today. And before getting into this, I, I do want to mention that there is no clear cut answer. Okay, there is no real robust truth. Okay, we do need to discuss this topic because it's an important topic. And we, we need to understand key considerations like I outlined earlier that are both practical and logical. Now, also, it is important to speak in the context of who we are addressing this message to, okay? Because when we are speaking to the population, the wide population as a whole, we need to understand that there are many subgroups within the population. So we can't just say in blanket terms that most of the people who train don't train hard enough. Okay, maybe it's the people who don't want to get jacked that don't train hard enough, and maybe that's okay. Okay, from my observations and people that I have spoken to, people who train and want to get jacked most likely train hard enough, and they're the ones who need to probably learn how to pull back. So we don't have any statistics right now that suggest the percentage of, of individuals who don't train hard. So we can't make these very confident assumptions about the population as a whole, okay? And we need to make it clear who we are speaking to when it comes to how hard you should be training because it is context dependent. And what we also need to know is that the further we reach into the unknown with these assumptions that we make on this topic, the greater the chances of our conclusions being further from the truth than we may like. Okay, and that is why you know, we need to be careful when making assumptions about population as a whole, okay, and using science to inform some of our decisions here is also important. Okay, and I must admit, I do have a bias towards science. I do have a master's degree in applied sports science and aim to pursue a PhD in the future. So that's a fair call, but hopefully um, over the, the rest of this video, I can provide you guys with an uh, informative and enlightening viewpoint that isn't too biased. So before getting into the main content of the video, we do need to discuss what hard training actually is. Okay, we need to define this and establish this before we speak about the nuanced details. So the context of this video will be muscle hypertrophy. Okay, in this video, video I'm gonna speak about what hard training is in the context of muscle growth. Now, when it comes to muscle growth, what we need to understand is that when we step foot into the gym and we lift a weight, our muscle fibers are experiencing what we can call mechanical tension. Okay, this tension, this stretch, this stress within the muscle is what allows it to grow, okay, is what allows it to adapt and get bigger. Now, when it comes to mechanical tension itself, there are two main ways that we can increase the mechanical tension response we get from resistance training. 
The first one is how hard we are working in a specific set. Okay, how much effort are we applying in a specific set? And we can measure this by our proximity to failure. So on average across all exercises, and there are some caveats to this, but on average, the closer you get to failure on an exercise, the more tension the target muscle fibers are going to experience. Okay, now this is assuming that exercise execution is uh, adequate. Okay, we, we need to set uh, that for now. Okay, we're not really gonna discuss exercise execution, but we're going to assume that across these exercises, exercise execution is adequate. Now, the second thing that we can do to increase that mechanical tension is do more volume. Okay, so in each set, we need to be training hard enough, close enough to failure, and we also need to do multiple sets, okay, to increase the amount of mechanical tension that our muscle fibers are experiencing. Okay, so this does seem to be two main ways we can manipulate the tension and then hopefully the adaptive response that our muscle fibers experience. Now, when it comes to hard training for hypertrophy, what this encompasses is an increase in mechanical tension. Okay, the harder you train in a set and the more of those sets you do, the more tension muscles experience. But there are some factors that can interfere with your perception of what hard truly is. For example, we have discomfort. Okay, resistance training, uh, particularly with high repetition ranges, can feel quite hard, okay? But that doesn't mean, that doesn't always mean that the mechanical tension your muscles experience is high. Okay, so high repetition sets usually come with a high degree of discomfort. The sensation, the deep burn that your muscles experience is quite prominent with those high repetition sets. And it is quite common for individuals to terminate their sets because of that discomfort. And they aren't meeting the required intensity thresholds to induce enough mechanical tension for an optimal uh, adaptive response. Okay, so remember, we need to be getting quite close to failure, okay? Quite close to muscular failure, which means the muscle fibers that we are targeting need to be the limiting factors. Okay, we need to terminate our sets because our muscles are no longer able to do any more work, not just because the set feels hard because of the discomfort. Okay, so we need to understand that there is a complete difference between a set that is that comes with a high degree of discomfort and a set that comes with a high degree of mechanical tension. Okay, lots of discomfort can still make a set feel very hard. Okay, but in the context of muscle hypertrophy, that's not exactly what we're after. Now, other factors include neurological fatigue, just being psychologically drained and not being able to do, you know, more repetitions and just terminating the set because you just really don't feel like it. Again, that makes training feel hard, but for hypertrophy, it's not exactly what we want. We also have secondary muscle fatigue, Okay, what if we're doing a seated cable row for our back musculature, but our forearms get burnt out? They're so burnt out and fatigued that we stop the set short. Again, it feels like a hard set, but we aren't achieving the mechanical tension response in our back muscles um, that we need to grow. And the last one, is just pure psychological fatigue that we may acquire throughout the day, which can influence our training and how we perceive hard. Now, what we need to ask here is, does feeling a high degree of these factors mean you are training hard? Okay, and based on the information that I just provided you with, you should know the answer to that question. Okay, in the context of hypertrophy, not necessarily. Okay, so we need to be training in a way that limits interference of these factors and maximizes our ability to train hard as per the definition I set earlier for maximizing muscle growth. So I hope that all makes sense. That is what hard training is. And now we need to speak about how we can actually use this information and apply it practically. And we need to now discuss how hard should we actually be training?
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is the notion that we need to be training harder than freaking last time. Now, intuitively, this makes sense. And it's an easy way to get the message across. Because on average, we do need to be training harder than our previous sessions. The mechanical tension that our muscle fibers experience doesn't need to be going up over time. And I'm going to get back to this in a second. Now, if we go into the gym with the mentality that we need to do as much as we can and we need to be doing more than we did last time, well, we are probably going to be doing enough to stimulate some growth and rest assured, we are most likely going to be doing enough to experience some progressive overload. Now, the phrase, we need to train harder than last time, essentially summarizes the training principle of progressive overload. You see, our body is very good at adapting to stress and things it experiences in general. When it comes to resistance training, our body becomes very good at tolerating the stress and the tension that we experience when we lift weights. So over time, the mechanical tension that we experience needs to be increasing because our body is going to be adapting to the sessions we are doing. For example, in week one of a training program, this amount of mechanical tension may be able to elicit a robust adaptive response. But if we keep doing the same amount of training that elicits this much mechanical tension as the weeks go by, the response that we get will start to diminish. And that is because, quite simply, our body gets better at tolerating that certain level of stress that it takes to elicit that much tension. So over time, we do need to be doing more work, okay? We need to somehow increase that mechanical tension response, whether it's by adding sets, whether it's by training harder within a specific set, so adding load, adding reps to get closer to failure. We need to experience progression throughout our training to ensure that the mechanical tension response is increasing and our body continues to adapt to the training we are doing. So really, that is progressive overload. We need to progress our training to keep pace with the adaptations that we acquire in each and every session. And that is why Greg says that we need to train harder than last time. Now, many bodybuilders have taken this approach. If you think back to Arnold's era, those guys did not rely uh, at all on the, the science. From my understanding, you know, they went to the gym and they just trained. They trained really hard, they did more than they did last week, and they got great results. And we have seen that you know, across many bodybuilders. And for me, this type of approach teaches work ethic, teaches consistency, determination. Um, you know, these are the, the traits that are so important for any individual looking to maximize muscle growth from the training they are doing. You know, this is the stuff that counts in the long run. And it doesn't matter how well planned your training is and how scientifically sound your training program is. If these traits aren't displayed, if you aren't adhering, if you aren't hitting every session with dedication and determination and the consistency is not there, the results won't be either. Okay, and that approach can foster those traits. Now, to take things a little bit further, the claim training harder than last time does lack a little bit of context. Okay, and it ignores the key considerations that need to be accounted for for productive training that maximizes muscle growth. And if you commit to the notion that you must train harder than last time, then you must also commit to the notion that at one point, you will have to be training maximally in each session. Because if you are continually trying to do more than you did yesterday, you will eventually reach your ceiling. Some people will reach it before others do, but you will get to that point. Once you get to that point, by definition, every session from then onwards is going to need to be maximal. Okay. Now, there may be some downsides to this. And if we use a subjective approach, you know, solely a subjective approach 
to assess how hard we are training and to assess our progression, well, there may be some limitations and you may be doing yourself a disservice. Okay, if you have studied the brain, you would know that our brain comes with many limitations, um, biases, shortcuts, emotional influence, and all of this can affect your training and the perception of your training and, and how hard you are training. All of this plays a role. Okay, and if you're using a subjective uh, approach, well, you do need to establish the parameters that you're going to be selecting to progress on a weekly basis. This is going to be sets, low reps. What are we progressing to make training harder? Also, how do you remember what you did last time? Okay, how do you remember what you did the last time you trained legs? Okay, these are the limitations to a subjective approach and many people utilize this approach. I've consulted with many people in the past who don't have a training program, who just rely on the intuition and their subjective experience of training to guide their training over time. Now on the flip side, if we are relying on just an objective approach and we are adding sets, reps, load each week and we see that on the logbook, well, we're going to get to a point where we probably are going to cap the amount of stimulus or training effect that we can achieve in a specific set. Okay, remember, the closer we are to failure on average, okay, the more tension our muscles are going to experience and the greater the training effect that we're going to uh, obtain from that set, okay, the greater the stimulus within that set. Now, once we get to failure, theoretically, we have capped the stimulus in that set. We can't go any further. That's the greatest amount of adaptive re uh, response we can elicit within one set then from that point you would have to start adding more sets okay to increase the total amount of tension that your muscle fibers experience and there will come a point where you will also cap the total amount of, of stimulus and and training effect you can achieve in one session due to feasibility due to time restraints we do need to consider this so again if you are solely focused on just doing more than you did last session you will hit that ceiling sooner uh, rather than later so using both a subjective and an objective approach is probably a good idea but we what we also need to consider here sorry is the effective responses to training really hard all the time and trying to do better than you did last time. Okay, we need to understand that psychological fatigue is a thing. Burnout is a thing. We've seen this before. Injury risk increases when you are continually trying to push yourself harder and harder. There's a greater time commitment as well with this type of training. And we also need to assess the adherence to this sort of a, a program. You know, how likely are you to just skip a session if you're always pushing yourself to the limits? Again, how likely are you to really, really enjoy your training? Definitely some considerations we need to take there. Now, if we also touch on the physiology, well, what we can say is that fatigue is a real thing. Whether you feel it or not, whether you like it or not, fatigue has in inhibitory effects on muscle fiber activation. And the more muscle fibers we can activate when we are training, the greater the tension that we're going to be experiencing. So we need some fatigue within sets to get us closer to that failure point and to get that mechanical tension response. But we can't have too much fatigue to the point where it starts to diminish or compromise the physiological response we get from training. Because remember, it does inhibit the activation of fast twitch fibers, which are crucial for muscle growth. Now, fatigue, which can be cumulative over time, which means it adds up and it lingers around your sessions, can also impact negatively your volume accumulation. That is the amount of volume you can actually do in a session that is productive. And we do see this, this correlation between volume and hypertrophy in the literature, and it's probably something we should pay some attention to, and we need to be maximizing the amount of productive volume we can do in each and every session, and fatigue can impact that. So to sum all that up, using a logical approach to organize your training, 
okay, is important. We need to develop a plan that it aims to progressively overload our training in a strategic manner. So we are doing more than last time, but we're doing it logically. This plan also needs to, to maximize periods of hard training for as long as possible. The longer we can train hard for without experiencing the, the ramifications of hard training, the better. And this plan also needs to implement periods of lighter training that allow us to do more down the track. It's taking one step back to take two steps forward. These lighter periods of training are important and they do need to be timed well. And this you know, summary that I've just provided is a logical approach to training harder than last time. All right, guys, I hope that all made sense. Now I'm going to touch on some more context-dependent considerations like goals and training status. Now, if you are a beginner who's looking to maximize growth, you're looking to get jacked, well, your first point of call probably needs to be technique. Technique itself, okay, executing exercises adequately is going to increase the amount of mechanical tension your muscle fibers experience and will make training harder independent of any other variable. So that really needs to be your first point of call. And good technique for hypertrophy encompasses many factors, one of them being uh, a full range of motion. Okay, ensuring that the target muscle is doing most of the work, ensuring that there is consistency, terminal consistency between each rep, and ensuring that stability is high within each repetition as well to allow for greater force output. So that's what we're after. Now, we need to focus on training harder each week when, when we're in that beginner stage as well. And you know what? It's actually not that hard to do when you are a beginner. And what I really recommend at this point is focusing, obviously, on your training, your technique, and you know, doing more as you go, but also building habits and enjoyment for training that are going to be long-lasting. And this is something we pride ourselves on here at JPS. When we're working with beginner clients, we ensure that they enjoy their training and they build habits that will keep them going in the long run. It comes back to those traits that I outlined earlier. Now, at this point, a logical approach to training may not get you superior gains, may not get you superior gains just trying to train harder than last week, okay? But maybe learning how to train logically earlier on in your training career will set you up for the latter stages of your career when it gets a bit harder to make some gains. Now, if we have a person who just enjoys going to the gym, wants to build a little bit of muscle, lose fat, and feel healthy, well, do they really need to be worrying about training harder than last time? Maybe not, okay? At this point, enjoyment needs to take precedence. And again, this is something that we really focus on here at JPS, okay? We need to ensure that these clients love their training, love the exercises they are doing, and aren't turned off by the intensity of the sessions. Okay, if you are a coach and you take a beginner client through several hard sessions consecutively, okay, I'm going to question you know, whether or not they are going to be enjoying their training. And this is an important consideration. Now, we also need to focus on the mental benefits of exercise at this point as well. It's not all about the physiological adaptations to the training, but also the psychological benefits. Okay, and these people should focus on getting stronger, should focus on performance, but just because they don't train harder than last time, it doesn't mean they haven't progressed and they aren't, get, aren't getting closer to where they want to be. So it's important to consider time scales here. Okay, these individuals don't need to progress from day to day, from you know, microcycle to microcycle, but over time, Okay, from month to month and year to year, yes, we should be seeing some progression. And like I said, there's many other factors that we need to prioritize at this point. Now, if you are an, an intermediate, okay, who wants to maximize muscle growth, again, you want to get jabbed. Well, this is where a logical approach to your training becomes increasingly important and is probably going to allow you to bust through the plateaus that are quite are prevalent when someone transitions from the beginner to the intermediate stage. 
Now, what I will say is that the one trait that I think uh, will allow you to burst through these plateaus is just quite simply learning how to train hard. And what I mean by this is reaching high intensity levels, okay, high levels of intensive effort, okay, so getting close to failure, learning how to do that on a diverse range of exercises. And this is a skill that needs to be honed, okay, when you're a beginner, you know, you're leaving a lot of reps on the table because psychologically you just are unable to get to those reps. You haven't unlocked those reps yet. And this is what you need to do in the intermediate uh, stages of your career. Learn how to push each and every exercise as hard as possible. Okay, learn about where your limits lie and taking sets to failure is crucial at this point. You need to know what it feels like to take sets to failure to establish, you know, your limits. And then you can work back from there. So that is really important. And I think that alone will allow you to burst through plateaus and see great amounts of progress in the intermediate stages of your career. Now, we also need to learn about the most effective means of, of training. Okay, so, you know, at this point, we can't just say, we're going to train harder than last week. It's not that simple, okay? There are many considerations, like I said, and we need to understand how we can maximize the productiveness and the effectiveness of each session whilst minimizing and limiting the ramifications of hard training. Because undoubtedly, you know, we can't deny that hard training, you know, does come with ramifications if done consistently with no control. So at this point, we need to use exercises that have the greatest potential to stimulate target musculature, ensure we're reaching those intensity thresholds that we need. So when we you know, note down that we did an RAR of two and we had two reps left in the tank after the set, it's a true two RAR. You, know, you don't have uh, three or four left in the tank. And this comes back to what I said earlier. And we also need to learn how to back off, how to pull back when the time is right. We need to maximize the amount of time we spend training hard, undoubtedly, but there will come a point where pulling back will only allow us to do more in the future and will only limit the ramifications of hard training. Now, when we get to that advanced level, this is where rate of gains you know, decline quite steeply. And this is where logical training, once again, is going to provide you know, some widespread benefits to your training. So at this point, you should know how to train hard, okay? You should have done that in, in the intermediate stage. And if you haven't yet, you know, if you, if you still think you're leaving reps on the table when you probably shouldn't, you do need to question your own training status and, 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 and um, yeah, have a think about that. And, you know, at this point, if, if you're not making the gains you want, well, you do also need to ask yourself whether or not you're training hard enough, okay? Because it could just be that one thing which is limiting your progress, which is limiting your ability to progressively overload your training. That's really important. And if you do think you are training hard enough, if you are pushing yourself to the limits, well, maybe this is where you need to take more of a logical approach and control your intensity in strategic ways, you know, over the course of a program, for example, over the course of a meso cycle. And, you know, at this point, unfortunately, just trying to do better than last time, trying to do more than last time, you know, it caps out really fast because advanced individuals should be very close to their ceiling and there's really just not many, much more progression, sorry, out there for them to obtain, right? So if you are advanced, what we also need to know is that you acquire more tension per repetition you do. And this is because advanced individuals generally have very efficient motor unit uh, firing um, pathways through their body. So they activate muscle fibers very efficiently, very effectively, especially when compared to novice individuals okay, who do uh, take quite some time to get to the point where they can innovate motor units and activate 
muscle fibers really well in a diverse range of exercises. Okay, so when it comes to an advanced individual, every rep they do and every set they do, they experience more tension. Now, they probably also experience more muscle damage due to experiencing more tension, and that also comes with greater recovery demands. Remember, the harder you train, the greater your recovery needs to be. Remember, recovery needs to somewhat match your training, your level of uh, training intensity and, and the total amount of training you're doing. If the recovery isn't there, we may be compromising the adaptive response we get from training. Okay, so considering all these factors, considering we get larger muscle fiber activation, we get more tension, more damage, greater recovery, well, all those you know, factors there indicate that a logical approach, which ensures we maximize the mechanical tension, but limit the fatigue, limit the damage, it indicates that a logical approach is important for that aforementioned reason. So at this point, we need to select exercises that come with the least fatigue, okay, but the greatest potential to, to target the primary muscles, we need to choose exercises that come with bang for buck. And we need to ensure that the plan we have in place maximizes overload. Okay, and there are many ways we can do that, obviously. Okay, and that's, you know, a video for another day. But quite, you know, simply, those are the considerations that we need to keep in mind. The basic key considerations that we need to keep in mind for you know the topic of today which is how hard you should be training based on your training status and your goals so guys that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed uh, the content and i hope it was useful to some extent and that you learned something and like i said in the the onset of this video the goal is to help you make sense of how hard you should train there is no clear-cut answer. There is no robust truth. And that is why I try to lay out some of the key considerations and some of the other things that we need to account for when speaking about this topic. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. And if need be, I can make a follow-up video to discuss some of the concepts a little further. That's it for today, and I'll see you guys soon.